Hello everyone, this is Jose from MicroRPS.io and in this video I'm going to show you how to integrate a fast API application with Auth0 to handle authentication and authorization. So in a previous video we set up Auth0 to be able to do these things and in this video we're going to add the endpoints necessary to login users and to issue access tokens for our APIs. In an upcoming video we are also going to see how to validate Auth0 tokens in our own application. As you will see, it only takes a few lines of code to get this up and running, and it is a very simple and secure way of managing authentication and authorization in your applications. This is one of the most requested tutorials I've had over time, so I hope you enjoy it and you find it useful. And without further ado, let's get on with it. Now we're gonna do some coding to show you how we do this integration with Auth0. So Auth0 is now completely configured. Now let's go to the terminal and we're gonna, uh, we're gonna create a script to do the machine-to-machine authentication flow uh, for illustration. So touch machine to machine dot pi. That's our script. We're going to install the dependencies, right? So if, if I do a list here, I have a pet project tumble file that is already configured for this project. What I'm going to do is poetry shell and then poetry at the libraries I'm going to use here for illustration are fast API, UVCon and requests. So it's already configured, already installed. So in my case, I don't need to install them again, but in your case, I recommend you install those libraries to follow along with the tutorial. And now here in the um, in my editor, uh, we're, we're gonna start coding the machine to machine application. And now we need a payload. So that payload is gonna come from the machine to machine uh, application here. So they have an example. If you come um, here, Then in the quick start, they have an, an illustration of the payload that we need. And so we're going to copy here. They have an example in Python, but it's actually not a very good example. So we're going to copy directly from the curl example here. We're going to say payload is equal to this dictionary that we grabbed from, from the example. We're going to format it nicely. All right, so that's our payload. What we need to send to Auth0 to authenticate this uh, headless application is the client ID. So that's the identifier of the client. This application here has this ID. And then it has the secret. So it's like a password, right? So the client secret here. And we need the audience, which is what we defined is the arbitrary um, identifier of the API which doesn't have to match our domain and the OAuth flow that we're going to use, which in this case is client credentials. So with that, now we're going to send a request to the authorization endpoint. So we're going to say response equals requests. We're going to use the requests library to make it easy. We import that. And now we need the domain of the, uh, of the authorization endpoint. So that is going to come from here. And we're going to say HTTPS, the domain, OAuth, token. And then the JSON payload. And that's all. Then we're going to print the response. So that's all. Now we're going to run the script. And that's our token. So this has authenticated our client directly with Auth0. To give you an idea of what the token looks like, we're going to go to jwt.io. I'm going to put the token here. And you can see all the claims. So the grant type that we use, the, the client credentials flow, the scope, the permissions admin, the expiry date, the audience, the subject, everything is here. So that's a nice and easy example with the client credentials flow. Now let's do a little bit more complicated example with the authorization code flow. So we're gonna create another file for that. It's gonna be server.py. We're gonna come to the file and we're gonna say server equals an instance of fast API. So we're gonna do the example with fast API. And now we're gonna create a login endpoint. So server get 
login and to login the users we're going to redirect them to auth0 so we're going to create a login url where the users will be able to log in and then that url if if the login is successful is gonna send them back to our website with an access code and we will be able to exchange the that code for the token that's why we call it the authorization code flow so what we need here is the again we need to have the domain the, the authorization endpoint so we're gonna say return redirect response input that and then HTTPS the authorization endpoint and then authorize so what we're doing is initializing the authorization flow and then the parameters so response type is code and then we have the client ID which we get it from here so this is machine to machine so we have to go back here the list of applications and we select the UI client this has an ID here so we're gonna put it here and then and redirect URI that has to match one of the allowed callback URLs that we included here in our case we're gonna redirect first to the, the docs page okay I'm gonna see that first and then I'm gonna show you the trick to make it easier through the token endpoint so we have that and then we're gonna say the audience is the identifier of the API which was this one so that's what we're gonna put here all right so that's our first step and let's just run the server with this So that's the server running and now we go here to the local host 8000 docs that's our only endpoint at the moment we go to login and that's going to redirect us to the to the login page of alt zero we login in this case with google for example we grant access to our profile in alt zero so what is doing is is telling this api wants to get access to your details in alt zero um, are you happy with that of course we are because we are logging into the API that's all now notice here we have a code in the URL right so that's what we have to exchange for the access token we're going to implement a token endpoint now to be able to make the exchange so let's say server get token And the code is gonna come in the URL. So it's just gonna be a get request and the code is a parameter in the URL. Now what we need to do here is we have to build another payload to access the token. So it's gonna be very similar to the payload we built before actually for the machine to machine client, but instead of a JSON payload it's going to be with uh, URL form parameters. So we're gonna say grant type is authorization code and then client ID is this one from the orders UI client and then we have code equals the code that came in the URL parameter and then we have redirect your right which has to match the redirect your right we specified in the first step of the authorization flow okay this is just to confirm that the request for the access token is legit it is coming from the same client and the same user that initiated the authorization flow so that and then we actually need another parameter here which is client secret and that is the secret that is hidden here inside the application we go to settings the secret is here right so that's the secret and now we're going to send this data to old zero we're going to put the headers also 
like this. So the content type is URL form encoded. And then the response is request post. We import this. And then from the authorization endpoint, our token. And then we have the payload. All right, and the headers as well here. So headers is equals to this. And then we return the payload coming from uh, all zero directly. So we're going to say return response JSON. All right, so now we go back to the browser. What we need to do is we grab the code here. We refresh the UI to include the new token endpoint. And we put the code here. And that is our access token. So again, if we go to the JWT.io page and we paste the token here, we see all the claims that we have in the token. Nothing special, uh, just the audience, the, ident the subject identifier of the user, just the stuff we need to validate the access of this request when it comes to the backend. What we can do now is we can come here to the Auth0 dashboard, we go to user management, come to the user, and we click on the user. And then on permissions, we can assign permissions to the user. So we can assign admin access to the orders API, but we can also assign roles. So whichever way we want to do it, we created this role. So if we want to give access to a bunch of different APIs that are consolidated into a specific role, we can do it that way. And now something interesting happens. If we do the login flow again, We have a new access code. We exchange it for the token. And we look at the JSON, at the JSON web token here. And now we have the admin permission here in the token. So that allows us to very easily validate different roles in different users based on what we have in the token. And this cannot be tampered because the token is signed with a private key that only lives in um, in the auth0 server so as long as we validate the signature we know the token is legit and we know we can trust all the claims here in the token now let me show you a nice trick here to do the token um, access a little bit easier from the uh, user's perspective so we're going to redirect the users instead of the documentation page we're going to redirect to the token endpoint and here we have to match the URL. So that's the only thing, the, the only change we have to make. If you see here, when we redirect users to the documentation page, we have the code already in the URL. So this could be docs as it could be token. And what's gonna happen is in the backend, we're gonna capture that code and we are going to exchange it directly for the access token. And we're gonna return the token payload here. We're not gonna have documentation anymore but we can have the tokens. Let me show you how that would work here. So we do login and we get the token directly. Okay, so that if you have UIs where you don't really want to handle all these token exchange, handling all these codes and everything, you can make it a lot easier for those developers by implementing the flow this way. What you would do in those cases is you return the UI actually, right? So with a template, Jinja template or something, you replace the access token somewhere in the template and maybe you redirect to another um, your um, page or something, but, but that's what you would do. You inject this information in the template and the front-end developer doesn't have to worry about manipulating all these codes and such and such. Now that's all good for now, but let me show you just one more thing. We can request additional scopes in the authorization flow. So we saw before when we were configuring the um, API that we enabled offline access, meaning we can get refresh tokens. But if you look at the API here, we don't have refresh token. We have the token, the type of token and the expiry date, but we don't have the refresh token. To include the refresh token, we have to add a scope here. So we make another line and we're gonna say, and scope offline access so if we do that and we do the login flow again 
now we are requesting additional scopes of our profile so we have to confirm give access again and now we have the refresh token here and by the way you see we are logging in many times so this is possible because it is a dev account a dev environment if it was a production account we might have been already right limited so this is the refresh token now we can request even more information in the authorization flow so we can request information about the user and we can get what is called an id token let me show you what it looks like so we would say open id profile email for example so we uh, request this information we do the login flow again we have to give access to these additional scopes and here we have more information now so now we have an access token a refresh token and an id token all right and the id token contains information about the user please never send this token to the backend okay this is not used for validation of any kind in the backend what we have here is identifying information about the user this is pii all right so it's already sufficient it goes through the wire once from all zero to your application it doesn't go for your application anywhere else okay um, this information you know is pii if it gets leaked in any way this is a, a very big breach of uh, data in your system so we have the name of the user we have the profile url we have the email whether it's been verified we have all of those details so that is the integration that i wanted to show you with auth zero today we set up the auth zero account follow the steps always the way i've shown you we click we create the api we create the clients we add the configuration that i showed you to enable for example role-based access uh, offline access and so on and so forth we've also seen how to integrate with auth zero to obtain access tokens and all of that so that's all for today um, I'll make more videos about validating access in APIs with the tokens that we've got from Opt0 right now. But that's for another day. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Thank you. All right. So that was everything. If you like this video, please like, uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, make a comment. Um, if you're interested in learning about other topics related to fast API, Python, or APIs or web development, please uh, leave your suggestions in the comments. Share this video with anyone who might benefit from it, your colleagues, your friends or family. And if you want to learn more about uh, API and web development in general, or working with Python or API security, check out my website, learn.microapis.io. I'm currently working on a whole series of courses about API and web development. I'm going to be uploading them very soon. And so if you want to learn more about these topics, check out the page. And if you have suggestions or you wish me to create courses on a specific topics, leave your suggestions in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Thank you so much and see you soon.